Hello, my name is Diatra Mitash and I'm the head of product at Johnson Labs. I'm here today to talk about one of the most important products we are working on at Johnson Labs, the Annotation Lab. An end-to-end no-code environment for training and testing AI models for text and image documents. I will quickly introduce the Annotation Lab and the main features it provides. I will then continue my presentation with two short demos. The first one will show how to put together high quality training data, how to train an NER model and deploy it in production environment. The second demo will focus on training a visual NER model. I will show how available models can be used for predictions, how data can be corrected, and how visual models can be fine tuned. I will then finish with some concrete pointers on where to start if you want to test the tools and libraries on your own. Now let me start with a bit of context. Over the last couple of years, we have conducted many industry level NLP projects for customers with different needs in terms of domains and types of documents to process or NLP tasks to perform. What we noticed in almost all cases is that often academic results are very hard to replicate in production systems, especially when you deal with messy real world data with limited processing resources or high throughput requirements or privacy and security constraints. In this context, we focused a lot of time and effort to keep up, with, up to date with the latest academic results and replicate them in our production ready NLP and OCR libraries. However, the models we pre-train and publish on the NLP Models Hub do not usually obtain the same accuracy results for the trained data set as the one noticed when training models or and when testing models on new real world documents from new domain or subdomain or on documents with structure and content radically different from the tasks seen during the training process. This is why the normal path that we take when starting a new NLP project is to first test the existing models and embeddings to see how they behave on the target documents that need to be analyzed. Then, uh, a team of domain experts manually correct the predictions generated by the models, and we use the new annotations as training data to fine tune the models. This is an iterative process, which is repeated until the accuracy results are accepted by the customers. Now, during the last years, NLP has improved a lot in terms of what is possible with state-of-the-art technology and how the industry is using it. It has now become a foundational technology. And you can see from the healthcare AI survey conducted by Gradient Flow last year that NLP is considered next to data integration, business intelligence, and data warehousing, one of the core technologies that have the technical leaders were using. This is also what we have been seeing on our end as more and more customers include NLP pipelines in their regular data processing flows. What we are now focusing on is to make this technology as accessible as possible to everyone who wants to use it. Up until now, AI models and pipelines have been accessible to a handful of people, namely to hands-on experts in deep learning and transfer learning. Now, our ambition is to make this technology accessible to everyone. Why is that? Because we have noticed in our interactions with the customers that everything works well for the duration of the implementation project, but afterwards, customers struggle with maintaining and further improving the models that we deliver or adapting them to new subdomains and new types of documents. This is due to the fact that the majority of our customers do not have, nor they intend to hire, data science teams specialized on NLP. Now, in order to support them, and in general, the domain experts, such as nurses, doctors, or lawyers, or accountants, or investors who want to use NLP technologies for extracting meaningful facts from documents or images, we have built the Annotation Lab as a free, no-code, end-to-end NLP platform, which can be used by anyone who wants to train NLP models or who wants to test or tune existing models for new documents or new subdomains. The tool evolved over the years and has now become the fastest way for enterprise teams to annotate data and train new models. It is based on a human in the loop paradigm, 
where domain experts continuously test the output of the models, improve the training data, and tune the model in order to obtain better accuracy results. The tool currently supports a wide range of annotation tasks, classification, name entity recognition, relation extraction, assertion status, to name just a few. Initially conceived as a document annotation tool, we kept on adding features to better support multiple teams and running projects in parallel, for instance. We also added a set of predefined project templates that can be reused or inter-annotators agreement matrices to help eliminate confusion in the annotations. We also added support for custom workflows, including simple one-step annotations or annotations and review workflows. We also added analytics dashboard that indicates the project progress and the annotator's productivity. We have recently compared the annotation lab with the main competitors existing on the market. And here is the comparison table on a feature by feature level. The basic things that we added to the annotation lab was support for text, image, video, and audio labeling. But we also wanted not to restrict the annotation to a certain language and offer support for multilingual text labeling. Finally, we added support for overlapping annotations, chunk-based annotations for text projects and relations labeling. From a project management perspective, having a dedicated team of clinic clinical annotators and uh, running in-house annotation projects, we noticed the need for specific features which will make the life of annotators easier and we integrated those into the annotation lab as well. So here is a complete list. And as you can see, all of those features are offered in the free version of the annotation lab. And those features are rarely found in the competitor tools. And if they are present, they are not provided for free. Let me name just a couple of the features that the tool supports. For instance, running multiple projects in parallel, grouping projects, searching and filtering projects support for task assignment for a better workload distribution among the annotation team, or task uh, tagging or task comments and role-based task status computation. Uh, also, identification of duplicate tasks can help eliminate possible inconsistencies between annotations. And finally, full API access to projects and tasks is also provided and also for free. To deal with security and privacy issues, which are commonly encountered in domains such as finance or healthcare or pharma, we have added role-based access control, role-based views on the project tasks, full audit trail and annotation versioning. Uh, the tool also supports single sign-on and we offer on-premise deployment for air gap environments, as well as AWS marketplace deployments. All of those features are also provided for free. Now, maybe one of the most important features that we integrated into the annotation lab is AI-assisted text labeling. This is provided as a free feature and it is powered by Spark NLP library. It is possible to add to your project configuration labels predicted by existing models and rules and run pre-annotations on your task to jumpstart the annotation project. On top of the model-assisted annotation, we also support transfer learning, bring your own Spark NLP models, model training, and active learning. Finally, we have a full integration with the NLP Models Hub, which gives direct access to pre-annotation via more than 5,000 models and embeddings. Let's now check a short demo of those features which illustrate how to create a new project, import tasks, annotate, then train and tune a model and deploy it via the NLP server. Let's start by creating a new NER project for recipe processing. I'll add a short description and a link to the annotation guidelines. I continue by adding annotators and reviewers to my team from the project team tab. Now I select one of the available project templates on the project configuration tab. From text sources, I click on Name Entity Recognition Template. On the right side of my screen, I will now see a preview of the default taxonomy for the NER projects and some sample text. 
In order to edit this configuration, I go to the configuration tab and I can directly edit the XML file or I can switch to the visual view where I can use the UI controls to remove labels and add new ones. I save the configuration and proceed to import a couple of tasks. On the import page, I click the file selection widget and choose a JSON file containing 40 new tasks and I click on import. From the tasks view, I can see the newly imported tasks which all have the status incomplete. This means they are all empty. No annotation or pre-annotation is available for them. I continue by clicking one of those tasks names in order to see the content of the task and start annotating it. On the labeling page, you can notice the taxonomy in the upper side of the screen and in the center the text I want to annotate or the content of the task. Let's start annotating. I activate one of the labels in my taxonomy by clicking it or by using the hotkeys. And then I select the text chunk I want to annotate. If the pages are long, it is worth saving the work from time to time so I don't risk losing it. Please notice that this task spins over three pages. I can navigate between the pages with the left and right arrows. And I can also customize the size of a page by selecting a predefined size from the drop-down or by defining a new custom size. This feature is very helpful when you have cross-page NER or relation annotations. You can easily alter the size of your page so that your annotations will be temporarily located on the same page. You create them and then you switch back to the initial view. When the annotation is finished, I submit the completion. This will fi finalize and mark it with a star, which means that this is the current ground truth that will be used for model training. In the case I change my mind and want to edit something to this completion, I clone it into an editable copy. I do the edit and then submit again. This will automatically update the ground truth assignment. Once a completion has been submitted and start, the task status will change from incomplete to submitted. We can see that in the task view. Let's fast forward to the point where all 40 tasks have been annotated and have the status submitted. As project owner, I can now train a first version of the model. Let's first check what servers are currently deployed in this annotation lab instance. I see here a pre-annotation server for radiology reports, which is using a floating license, which has been deployed by Angel 17 minutes ago. Annotation Lab is able to create multiple servers and run training or pre-annotation in parallel. The only restrictions are imposed by the actual available hardware resources. If you want to train or to pre-annotate tasks using license models or embeddings, you will need to one or several licenses. Each one of those licenses will be used by one of the servers running the license configuration. It is not the case for my example as I am using the free options. Going back to the project, I navigate to the setup page and then to the Training and Active Learning tab to train my model. I will use the open source Spark NLP and Glove 100 Dimension embeddings. I will keep the default values for all the other training parameters and press the Train button. A pop-up will ask me if I want to deploy the model after training. This means that once trained, this new model will be deployed on a new server and it will be available to pre-annotate tasks. Let me navigate to the Settings page again to see the new server created for my project. It does not use any license and it is currently training a new model. While the model trains, let's also check the model's hub page. Here I can easily discover and download over 5000 models and embeddings which are published on the NLP models hub. Once they become available on the hub, I can use them for pre-annotation in my projects or fine-tune them for my documents. Under the available models tab, I see all models downloaded from NLP Models Hub or trained via the Annotation Lab. Once the training will finish, my new model will also appear here in this page. Going back to the training screen, I can see the stage of the training process in the right side. If I click on the yellow button, I see in real time the logs generated by Spark NLP together with the accuracy metrics for the current epoch. This is automatically updated. When the training is finished, the status becomes green and the model is deployed for pre-annotation. It also becomes available on the model sub and I can manually download the model and use it in my Python pipelines offline. I can also rename it or remove it entirely. At this point, I can also deploy my model via the NLP server 
or external testing or integration via API. The deployment can be done from the Models Hub page by clicking on the NLP Server button. This will launch a new instance of the NLP Server, which will be aware of the custom model I just trained. I select the spell to run by searching for my project name, then put in some text to analyze in the text box or upload a text or CSV file and run preview to see the results. NLP Server also offers an API endpoint that can be used to call the NLP pipelines from your existing applications and systems and analyze data at scale. The NLP Server is a turnkey solution for applying Johnson Apps NLP and OCR on your documents without writing a line of code. It is a free and easy to use tool that you can download and run on your own infrastructure with zero data sharing. So, on top of the free annotation features, we also offer extended support for healthcare and OCR features, which are dependent on the presence of a Spark NLP for healthcare or Spark OCR license. Regarding the healthcare extension of the annotation lab, it provides support for contextual parser rule-based annotations and for the use of the pre-trained healthcare models and embeddings. As such, the annotation lab allows clinical and biomedical entity detection, clinical assertion status detection, healthcare-specific relation extraction, or entity normalization to standard medical taxonomies. It also offers support for transfer learning for NER models. As you can see, those features are not offered out of the box by any of the other tools in the market. When a Spark OCR license is present, Annotation Lab is able to import selectable as well as scan PDF documents or image documents and detect the text included in those and allow simple and straightforward annotation on top of those images. Let's now see a short demo on how to run annotation projects on PDF documents. We'll see how to import the license into the annotation lab from your account on My Johnson Labs, how to create a visual NER project, import some image or PDF files, pre-annotate them, and then tune a custom model. In this demo, I want to showcase the visual NER support included into the annotation lab. And for that, I need a Spark OCR license. From the license page, I can connect to my account on myjohnsonlabs.com, see all the available licenses and import the one I want to use with the annotation lab. Then I can continue with creating a new project for the analysis of discharge summary documents. From the project configuration tab, I choose a per region template, namely visual NER labeling. I save this initial configuration then navigate to the predefined labels view. I want to reuse one of the existing pre-trained models and tune it for my current document set. This will also help jumpstart the annotation process. I click on the visual NER clinical model and then choose three of the labels it predicts and add them to my current configuration. I do not want to deploy this configuration yet as it is not finalized. Now let's check how the configuration looks and remove the default labels added by the template. Also, I want to edit the colors associated with my labels, so my annotations are easier to differentiate. I save and deploy my configuration, then proceed to import a new task. I choose a PDF document and click Import. Spark OCR will now process this document in order to identify the text it includes, and once all its pages are OCR'd, a new task will be created. As I already deployed the pre-annotation server, I just need to select the task and click on the pre-annotate button. Once the pre-annotation is finished, clicking on the task name will redirect me to the labeling screen. I see the prediction which was generated by Spark OCR and all the annotations it includes. The pre-annotation is read-only. In order to edit it, I have to clone it into a new completion. Now, the next step is to go over the annotations and edit them if necessary. For adding a new annotation, I activate a label by clicking it on the taxonomy region or by pressing its assigned hotkey. Then I click on the token I want to annotate. If I want to define a chunk annotation, I click on the first token, press and release the shift key, and then click on the last token of my selection. This will add a chunk annotation that can span multiple lines. 
you can notice in the recognize text area the text which corresponds to the selected image region or bounding box. I continue correcting the annotations on this page, I save my work and then move to the next page. Once all my annotations have been corrected, I proceed with submitting this completion. The status of my task will change to submitted, signifying that this annotation will be used in the next model training. I did this exercise for 100 more documents offline, and let me import the annotated tasks here. Now let me show you how I can tune this model for the new annotated tasks. From the setup page, I go to Training and Active Learning tab. I want to train a visual linear model, and I will use for these 5 epochs and keep the default values for all the other training parameters. Save my preferences and hit the Train Now button. The pop-up asks me if I want to deploy the model after training so that it becomes available for pre-annotations. I choose yes and the training starts. I can check the logs by clicking on the yellow button. After approximately half an hour my model will be ready. It will become available for pre-annotations on this current project. It can also be reused by other projects run by other groups of annotators. And it will also become available on the Models Hub. You can rename it, download it for offline use in your Python pipelines or delete it when it is no longer needed. Training logs are also available to download in case they are necessary for keeping track of your experiments. So if you want to test our tools, they are available to download and install from our website johnsonlabs.com. Both Annotation Lab and the NLP server are available on the AWS Marketplace and the NLP server is also available on Azure Marketplace. You are welcome to use the free version of those two tools, but if you want to check how the healthcare and OCR features behave on your own data, you can ask for a trial license at this link. If you have any suggestions or questions or feedback, please contact me via email or on LinkedIn. Thank you very much for your attention and enjoy the rest of the summit.